for our unit 2B test. And remember at the very first we started with parabolas that had um, this form for their formula. Y equals 1 over 4P times in parentheses X minus H in parentheses squared plus K or those were the ones that opened up and down. If they opened left and right, we had x equals 1 over 4p times in parentheses y minus k in parentheses squared plus h. So on this first part, I could give you two pieces of information and ask you to come up with the equation. I could give you the focus, and let's say this time the focus is at negative 3, 1, and a directrix. At y equals negative 3. And what I suggested initially was that you might do just a little quick sketch of a graph over to the side. Notice it's going to go in the negative direction and up one. For the focus, so I think I'll draw it about right here. And if I need to make my grid bigger in a minute, I will. But the focus is over negative one, two, three and up one unit. That's where our focus is. Okay? And the directrix is y equals negative 3. So that means it's a horizontal line. 1, 2, 3. y equals is always horizontal and it's y equals a negative 3. And again, this is our x-axis and this was our y-axis. So we need to know where our vertex is to be able to get our equation. We need our h and k values. We'll notice is that if I count from the focus to the directrix, it's one, two, three, four units. So halfway in between right here is where our vertex would be. The focus is always inside the parabola, so it's opening up. Okay, I'm a visual learner, that's why I like doing that. And if it opens up, then it's a y equals equation. So, they might ask you to identify the axis of symmetry. They might ask you for the vertex. They might ask you for the direction that it opens. I'm just going to write the word direction. And then we'll give them the equation. Well, let's answer some of those. If this is the directrix, we know the axis of symmetry has to be a vertical line that goes through our vertex. So it's x equals, and we're over negative 3, so x equals a negative 3 would be our axis of symmetry. The vertex, well on the grid we counted, we found out where it would have to be to be exactly halfway between the focus and the directrix. And that was at negative 3, negative 1. The direction that opens is up. And the equation is f of x or y, I don't care what you call it, equals, well it's 1 over 4p. Well remember p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. So you go in the positive direction two units. So if I put a 2 there, 4 times 2 is 8, so it's 1 8 times in parentheses. It is always x minus the h value, and the h value is the x coordinate of the vertex. Well, minus a negative 3 becomes plus 3. Close parentheses squared, don't forget your square, or it's not quadratic. And the y value is the of the uh, vertex is the k value, so minus 1. Okay?
try another one with different given information. Number two, this time I'm going to give you a focus at negative one, four, and this time I'm giving you the vertex at two, four. And once again, we're going to be writing the equation, but it's usually easier if you get a graph going first, so you can see what's going on. At least I think it's easier. So I think I can make this the x-axis. That's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. The focus is at negative one and one, two, three, four. Here's our focus. Our vertex is at two and up one, two, three, four. So if this is our vertex and this is our focus, remember a focus is always inside the parabola, so it's going to curve and open to the left. So is that going to be an x equals equation or a y equals equation? Well, it's got to be an x equals. This is when the y is squared. x equals 1 over 4 times the p-value. Well, how far is it from the vertex to the focus? Well, we go over 1, 2, 3 in the negative direction, so it's a negative 3. Watch your signs. Then in parentheses, it's y minus the k value. Well, the k value of the vertex is 4, because we're up 4 units. It was at 2, 4. So if I'm up 4 units, it's y minus 4, close parentheses squared, plus the k value, which is 2. And all you would have to do is clean up that denominator. So x equals a negative 1 12th times y minus 4 squared plus 2. Okay, and there's your equation. If they asked you for the axis of symmetry, well, it would be this horizontal line that goes right through the vertex and a horizontal axis of symmetry is a y equals equation and the y value there is 4. Number 3. This time your vertex is at 0, 0, and the directrix is at x equals 2. So again, I'm going to go over here to the side and do a little quick sketch. Well, the vertex is at zero, zero. There's the origin. There's your vertex. The directrix, x equals two. That means all the x values are two. So it is a vertical line crossing the x-axis at two. There's our directrix. This is our vertex. So where is our focus? Well, the vertex is halfway in between, so right here is where the focus would be. So we have a parabola that opens to the left. So it's an x equals equation. If any time it opens left or right, it's an x equals 1 over 4 times the p-value. Well, from the vertex to the focus, we're going in the negative direction 2 units times y and again, that k value is 0, so I don't need to add anything to y, it's just y squared. And the final proper form would be x equals a negative 1 eighth y squared. 
Number four. This time you have a focus at 3, 1 and a directrix at y equals negative 3 and I haven't said it today but you know every time we review it is in your best interest to see what the problem is I'm giving you then pause your video try it on your own that should always be the case when we get to a review problem then turn it back on to double check okay so this one I think I'll make it over here All right, so on this one, the focus is at 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, and up 1. There's our focus. The directrix is y equals a negative 3. So 1, 2, here's 3. So I have to have this horizontal y equals a negative 3 line. So if I came down 1, 2, 3, 4 units to get to the um, directrix, the vertex is halfway in between, so it would be right here for the vertex, which is at 3, negative 1, that's the coordinates for the vertex, and now I can write the equation. Well, let me draw it. The focus is inside, so it is a parabola that opens up. So it is a y equals 1 over 4 times the p-value. Well, the distance from the vertex to the focus is going in the positive direction to units, so it's a positive 2 times x minus the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is 3, close parentheses squared, and then the k-value is minus 1. y equals 1 eighth times x, oops, minus 3 in parentheses squared minus 1. Alright, they could give you some like the following problem. Here they're going to give you the equation y equals 1 16th then in parentheses x minus 2 close parentheses squared plus 1 and they could ask you to name the vertex. They could ask you to name the axis of symmetry. They could ask you to name the focus. They could ask you to name the directrix. So you would have several blanks to fill in. And again, I think it starts by looking at the graph. Let's see if I can make this big enough. All right, so where is my vertex? Positive two, positive one. Axis of symmetry. Well, it's a y equals equation, so it's going to open up or down, which means it's a vertical line for the axis of symmetry, which means it goes through that same and has that same x-coordinate of the vertex. The focus. Well, let's draw what we know and go from there. The vertex is over 2 and up 1. So there's our vertex. The axis of symmetry, we said, is x equals 2. Great, I could draw that line in there. But what I need to find is my p-value. The denominator is 16. And if 4p is equal to 16, divide by 4, and the p-value is 4. So that means I'm moving in the positive direction 4 units to get to the focus. 
So from here I go up one, two, three, four, and here's my focus. It is at two, five. So there's my parabola opening up around with that focus in the interior. And if I went up four units to get to the focus, I go down one, two, three, four units. And down here is my directrix at y equals negative three. Okay. Number six. Get another piece of paper over here. It will come apart. You were given problems where they gave you three points and they wanted you to find the quadratic equation for those three points. So that's what this problem is. The ordered pairs are negative 3, 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, 6. So if you remember what you need to do to get the for the next step and to find your answer, start working on it. Your equations will be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. So on this first equation, if I replace x with a negative three and square it, I get nine times a. So my first equation has a nine a. If I put a negative three in place of x for the second term, negative three times b is a negative three b plus c, I don't have anything for c, equals the y value, which is two. So again, I put x in place of x, I put, or I put negative three in place of x, I put two in place of y, and this is the equation for that first ordered pair. Going to the second one, when I put replace x with a negative one and square it, negative one times a negative one is one times a, which is just a. Negative one times b gives me a negative b plus c equals zero for the y coordinate. And the last one, again, when I square one, I get one in front of a, so a times one is a. One times b is a positive b plus c equals the y coordinate which is six. So this is my system that I must solve. So we're going to take two of those equations and eliminate one of the variables. I'm going to take the first equation. I think I come over here to the side trying to make it not go all the way down the page. The first equation and then the second equation multiplied by a negative one. The first equation is 9a minus 3b plus c is equal to 2. And if I take the second equation and multiply it by a negative one, I have a negative a, I have a positive b, I have a negative c, and a negative one times zero is just zero. When I add those, I have 8a, I have a negative 2b, c is eliminated, and it equals 2. So this is my first equation that I get when I eliminate a c. Now I'm going to, I haven't used the third equation yet, so I'm going to use the second again, still multiplied by negative 1, and add it to the third equation. So again, that second equation times a negative one was negative a plus b minus c equals zero times a negative one is still a zero. And the third equation was a plus b plus c equals zero. When I add, the a's are eliminated. For the b's, I have two b. The c's are also eliminated. Oops, I copied that last number wrong, and it's supposed to be a 6 right there. Equals 6. Divide, and I find out that B is 3. 
So what you need to realize right here, because you thought you were going to get a second equation with A and B in it, sometimes you get a bonus. This is what I call as a bonus. I have the value of B right now. Instead of having to work and solve a system of two equations with two unknowns, I already know one of them. If I take this value of 3 and replace B with it, I will immediately know A. So it's saving me a little work. So let's do that. Let's take this equation, 8A minus 2 times my B value I just found is 3 equals 2. 8A minus 6 is equal to 2. Add 6 and 8A is equal to 8. Divide and A is equal to 1. So I have the A and the B value. And I'm going to go right up here and put it in one of my equations and find C. Because I've got A and I've got B. And I'm just going to use the last equation. We're looking for whatever A plus B plus C equals 6. A is 1 plus B is 3 plus C is equal to 6. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4 plus C is equal to 6. If I subtract 4 on both sides, C is equal to 2. So you've done the work. Don't forget to write the answer. f of x equals ax squared. Well, my a value is 1, so 1 times x squared is just x squared. Plus bx, well, the b value is 3, so it's plus 3x. <coughs> and the c is 2, so plus 2. There's my equation. Okay. Number seven. So here's where we went through transformations. G of x is equal to, in parentheses, x minus 4 in parentheses squared minus 3. So first, I want you to describe the transformation. Well, it went to the right 4 and down 3. Right 4, down 3. When you get to where you're describing a reflection over the x-axis, you have to write out all the words, not just reflection. When it's a vertical stretch by a factor of something, you have to write vertical stretch by a factor of not just stretch or compression. So if I graphed it, I would go to the right, one, two, three, four, and down one, two, three. There's my vertex. This, unlike the earlier parabolas, we were able to graph it in comparison to the parent function, which from this point is over one, up one over 2 and up 4, over negative 1 up 1, over negative 2 and up 4. And you would get a very accurately drawn parabola. Okay? So don't forget that. Number 8. This function is h of x equals negative 2x squared plus 5. Again, describe the transformation and graph it. And remember, the negative sign in front is a separate piece of the information. It's a reflection or reflected over the x-axis. The 2 tells me it's a vertical stretch. By a factor of 2. And it wasn't moved left or right at all. But that plus 5 at the end, end means it went up 5 units. So, a little grid over here.
Again, it's not moving left and right at all, but it is going up five units. One, two, three, four, five. So our vertex is at zero, five. But it is reflected over the x-axis. So instead of moving over and going up, I'm going to go down. But it's also being stretched by a factor of two. So when I move one to the right of that vertex, instead of going up, I'm going down twice as far. So down two units. After going over two, instead of going down four, I would have gone down eight. Same thing on the other side, over a negative one and down two. Over a negative two from that and down eight. And draw accurately. A grid will be drawn on your test. And there is our graph of that transformation. Number nine. K of x equals three times x plus two squared minus four. Describe the transformation and graph it. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. It's been shifted to the left two and down four. So if I come over to the left two and down one, two, three, four, here's my vertex. It opens up and instead of going over one and up one, it's being stretched three times as far. So it's going up one, two, three units over negative one and up one, two, three units. And if I went over two, instead of going up four, I'd go up three times as far, I'd go up 12 units. Well, I'm not gonna make that big of a graph, so I'll just go through those points that fit on that grid. Okay? All right, on some of your problems, they're going to give you a graph, and they're gonna expect you to get the equation by looking at the graph. So this is number 10. So let me see if I can draw this accurately enough that you can see what's going on. So my graph goes through this point, and this point, and this point, and with the grid drawn, it will be really easy for you to read it, but I'll point it out here. Obviously you can see that it's over 1 and down 2, so the vertex is at 1, negative 2. Hopefully you can tell from my drawing and I could lightly pencil in the grid so you can see what I'm talking about if the grid was there. Okay. So from the vertex going over one, you're going up exactly one so it's not stretched or compressed. That's what you need to be able to tell from the graph. So we've got our vertex and let's write our equation. Again, I don't care if it's f of x or a y, makes no difference to me. But if they want you to describe, it goes to the right one and then down two. So the function is f of x equals, in parentheses, x minus a positive one squared, then minus two. 
Right, let's do one more graph and then we'll finish up by changing standard form into vertex form. And again, I'm keeping these really close to the origin since you're doing it from whatever you can see on this video. And we have vertex here. It goes through this point and it goes through this point. Yeah, it looks like, oops, kind of missed that one. Pretend it goes through there accurately. And again, we kind of draw the grid in there. And if you already know how to get your equation, by all means, go ahead and write your equation. It is reflected over the x-axis. Is it stretched or compressed? Well, look, from the vertex, if I move horizontally one, I'm going down. We know that's the reflection, but I'm not going down one unit, I'm going down two. So it's got a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And it was shifted one unit to the left, so left one and then up one. So the equation would be f of x equals negative because it's reflected, two because it's stretched, then x minus a negative one becomes plus one squared and then plus one for the k value. All right, number 12. If I give you g of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 13. And I want it in vertex form. Again, go try it before you just watch the video. The nice part on this one is there was nothing to factor out in front, so it was a little bit nicer. Move the constant term down to complete this perfect square trinomial. Half of 8 is 4 and 4 squared is 16. If I add 16, I have to subtract 16 to keep it equal to what I started with. And the reason these signs are opposite is they're both on the same side of the equal sign. Now g of x equals, when I factor it, x plus 4 squared. Remember, what was squared first, x, what was squared last? Well, half of that middle term, 4. 13 minus 6 is negative 3. They could ask you for the vertex. Once you've gotten that work, it is at negative 4, negative 3. They could ask you for the axis of symmetry. Be sure you read all of your directions. X equals negative four. Last problem. H of X equals three X squared minus six X plus eight. First thing we want to do is factor a 3 out of the quadratic and linear term. And move that constant term down so that we can complete the square and make it a perfect square trinomial. Half of a negative 2 is a negative 1, and when I square it, I get a positive 1. But with that 3 that was factored out in front, You've actually added 3 to this side of the equation because 3 times 1 is 3. So to keep it equal to what you started with, we also have to subtract 3.
factoring. That perfect square trinomial, it factors as x minus 1 squared. And 8 minus 3 is 5. So this one has a vertex at 1, 5. And the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals positive 1. All right, that is the review for your test. So practice the problems that you need to practice. Be sure you're ready for the test and uh, do a good job.